Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies, and now we're going to look at this old Hoyt. Now, I did a video the other day on an old Anida. It's called a Pro... Pro Anida? Pro Strike Anida? Anyway, whatever it was. I had so many comments on that, on that video. I had so many people ask to buy that bow from all around the world, literally all around the world. I've never had a response like it from a bow which is 20 years old. So many people sending me pictures of all their old Anidas. It was amazing. Now there's probably only three of those bows in Australia, I think. Um, I think I only sold three of them. So I want to show you this one. So this is from the same guys. Um, his name's Gil. Um, friend of my dad at the time. Um, used to go away hunting with him. Um, so, so it came in a Hoyt case. That's an expensive Hoyt case. Now, for everyone who loves Hoyt, and I know there's plenty, this is a CRX32. This bow was made in 2012. Now, I am, was not and never was a Hoyt distributor or Hoyt deal. Um, like, we sell Hoyts, but we're not a Hoyt distributor. When Hoyt left Australia, so Hoyt was in Australia distributing to all the shops, and we used to buy Hoyt from Hoyt in Australia. Okay, this is my dad's shop. Um, back in 1984. When Hoyt left Australia, they gave out distributorships to all the shops in Australia. Literally all the shops and Dad said, no, I don't want one because I'm a Martin guy. I'll just sell Martin, right? So, we were the only shop in Australia not selling Hoyt. So Hoyt was huge in Australia. Now, so, I really don't know much about this. I don't have a connection with this bow. I'm wondering... Because there's a whole bunch of people who love Hoyt, and I used to get lots of hate mail from people on Hoyts. Um, so I'm hoping there's lots of people who love this bow. So this is a CRX 32, 32 inches long. They reported a speed of 330 feet per second on this, which is pretty quick for a bow which is 20 odd years old. Now this is the laminated limb. So this is the good limb. So Hoyt have since, so basically back in time, I said, well, look, these limbs aren't as good as the pressed down limbs because you don't get the same speed and the vibration and all that. And people are like, no, nah, these, are, these are the best limbs in the industry. Now, these limbs are rock solid. They are really good. When I say really good, really dependable, durable limbs. I just said you didn't get the same performance. The other limbs are actually cheaper, and now that's what Hoyt use on their limbs. So Hoyt now uses what everyone else use. Um, which you can say these limbs were better. Like, I don't know. This is a hybrid cam system. So a different cam, top and bottom, a yoke at the top. Now, the problem I said back then was these modules are fixed. And to change the draw length, you had to unbolt them and grab another one. And then I think these cams only did a certain range of draw lengths. So then it became hard. I said that I got lots of hate messages now um, back then. Um... Look, Hoyt now have rotating modules much, much better in my view. Now, however, after saying all that, this bow is old and it will shoot forever. Um, now, if you knew your draw length and you're all that, then that's good. Now, some things which are really good about this bow, roller slides here. This stops the cables moving backwards and forwards. Look, this is a good thing. It makes the bow quieter. String stop down the bottom, good thing. This is a, I think this is a cast riser, it might be a machine riser, but metal limb pockets. Look, this is not a cheap bow, back in the time. A Hoyt two-piece quiver, which is expensive. It had a Hoyt um, QAD arrow rest. Now this, this is 20, 20 years old. Now QAD arrow rest. If you over pull them, so if you're like fitting this thing and you over stress the thing, you're gonna break the internals. And then you're going to say, well, this is broken and, you know, it should be covered by warranty and all that. This is 30 years old, 20 years old. Um, now, I don't think I did this as far as I don't think I set up this bow because this D-loop is different to what I normally do. Um, it's kind of funny. You can kind of tell your work versus someone else's work. The peep site's not me, um, but it's people I know. So... But it's kind of interesting. It's just little things. You can tell if it's like a bow you built 20, 30 years ago because there'll be things about it which are different. Now, on the Anida, I'm going to guess this bow at the time was more expensive than that Anida. Um, and definitely with all the accessories on it, it definitely would have been. Same era as the Anida. And 
people ask, how much would you sell the Oneida for? I had a lot of people and they're like, you will get over a thousand US dollars for that secondhand Oneida. It is a collector's piece and there's so many people who want it and they're so rare to get, they're almost impossible. Now, back in the day, back if we roll back the clocks to 2012, there was a lot more of these sold and a lot more people said this is the bee's knees of boats. If you go and read the reviews on this boat, they say this is the greatest boat ever. Now, rolling the clock forward 20 years, which boat do you want? Do you want this one or the Oneida? I find that very interesting. So we're gonna have a shot. I have never shot one of these bows. Um, so, look, I'm gonna shoot these Pandaris arrows um, out of it. This is just a cheap carbon arrow. I don't know what the draw length is. I'm hoping, oh, it's a 70 pounder. I don't know if I'm gonna draw this and I might rip my shoulder out, which is gonna be a bit of a bugger for, today, for today's shoot. Okay, it's starting to get easier. Oh, that's all right. I'm gonna take this shot. Well, the good news is I didn't rip my shoulder out. Uh, that's a good one. Look, the draw cycle's pretty good. It's pretty good, nice solid wall, which people say in the reviews. The bow's pretty quiet. It's, um, it's, like it's a 20 year old bow. It's, it's, it's pretty good. The grip is very much like the Hoyt grips of today. It's a wood grip and it feels like, and when I say the Hoyt grips of today, Hoyt have got two styles of grips. One's for the target archers, which is flat and square. And then you've got the hunters who have got this rounded grip, which is like this, right? So they're very different. So if you grab a Hoyt, Depending which model you get, it feels different. If you grab a PSE, it feels the same. If you grab an Elite, it feels the same. Bowtech, they feel the same. With Hoyt, they have two different style grips. Um, but, but this is good. Um, look, they claim it's four pounds. I think it's heavier. Um, look, this has got an um, Apex sight. He's put a lens in it. It's micro-adjustable. Did have a light. I don't know if it works or not. <laughs> the battery would be 20 years old. Um, look, this quiver's pretty good. It's got twin holders here. You can see this guy shot this boat a lot. Um, look, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good, pretty good finish. Just going to shoot another shot. Look, I think this is really solid. I would rate this. This is 20 odd years old. And like I said, 20 years ago, I was not the distributor for Hoyt, so I knew nothing about this bow. I would rate this bow. Um, I think all the points I I said about Hoyt before are still valid. It's a pain you can't adjust the draw length. Where you can, you can buy modules. That's a pain. Um, look, I think the limbs are really solid. That's a plus. But they don't have the same performance as the compressed ones because they put their strings under more tension. However, these limbs are going to last forever. This bow is literally going to last forever. And it's still pretty... It's still... Pr like, it's a, still a pretty performance bow. It's... Like it's got draw stops down here, up here. Like if you had, if you had one of these bows, you'd be questioning why you're buying the new model because it's pretty good. Um, you know, you could say, why would you buy? The, I'm going to say the new Elite because I've got an Elite shirt on. And you're going to say you're pushing Elite. Look, the Elite you can change the value in the draw length, the let off. There, you know, you've got the tilting of the limbs, you can adjust. Look, that's pretty cool stuff, but it's all means nothing really because you just got to shoot the arrow. But if you want to adjust the let off, if you want to adjust all that stuff, you can't do that on the new Hoyts, but you can do it on the new Elites. And you know, the Botex, you can move the cams backwards and forwards, and they've got the flip modules to change the feel of it. The new bows give you more options, but this this feels good. It's a nice, solid bow. 
at at a price point which is very very affordable so if I had a choice between one of these and a second hand bow sorry and a new bow because being second hand you can pick it up cheap I'd probably buy this if the draw length is correct for me if the draw length wasn't correct then I have to see if I can get modules for it because that's going to be a problem it comes in a beautiful case um, the case is fantastic um, the quiver is fantastic um, and it's a really really good setup um, it feels fantastic so it's in good condition so that's the CRX 32 now I have no emotional connection with this boat at all so it means nothing to me I never shot one I've never shot it before so it's got no memories for me as soon as I shot as soon as I saw the Anida, I was like there's a memory that was the time I stopped selling Anida. it had CP which stands for Claude Pollington who is the new owner of the company and once he took it over I stopped buying because I don't know things changed um, anyway at the time he was the biggest Anida dealer in the world took over the company and that was pretty much when I stopped buying so that was the end of it and those bows were really really rare and it was a really nice bow and a nice grip and I used to shoot Anida so it meant a lot to me my question is is this going to mean a lot to you to the Hoyt shooters from 20 years ago and they're going to say, oh, I love that bow. I really want to buy it. I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to be getting 10 emails, would you please sell me this bow? But I could be wrong. Um, someone said, look, an old Hoyt's a dime a dozen, but this is a nice bow. And it comes with a nice case and all the bits on it. Anyway, I'm Stephen Han. Thanks for watching.